This project is, as you can probably tell, called The Disappointed Tourist, which is kind of a, a goofy title, right? Like, you know, you go somewhere and you're like, oh, you know, I'm gonna write something on one of those websites. I'm just not, I am not happy. But it comes actually out of some very serious um, feelings in my case. Um, one of them was, in the last years, I felt that nostalgia has been getting, both been being misused and getting kind of a bad rap because it's misused. So there are ways in which people were saying, oh, people want to go back to the past, which obviously for most people would be really bad. Um, you know, there, there's no question that the past was good for a very small number of people. And yet at the same time, this sort of nostalgia for the past gets used, I think, to manipulate people sometimes. And I started thinking about it and I was like, it's not really fair because actually we all have nostalgia. Like it's part of the human condition to feel, have a relationship to the past, to miss the past. It's a complicated relationship. And I thought, well, I'm an artist, I'm a painter. Like what can I do that would kind of add something interesting to this discussion? And I thought, I would like to make a project where everybody feels welcome where every single person can come and feel like, okay, you know, maybe my story's not here, but I could add it. So I thought I wanted to do something with, with other people's stories. But then I also thought, you know, I wanted it to be connected to this idea of place. Like, you know, we live on this planet all together. And in some ways, we love it, right? We all love places. They're places that we care about. And I feel that needs to be, more, that needs to be celebrated. And I think part of deciding what we want to do next with our planet is about saying, well, what have we been doing? And what, what, what do we wish we'd done differently, maybe? Which things would we have liked to have saved? And so I put out this open call into the universe, which was this very simple question, which is, is there some place that you would like to visit or revisit that no longer exists? And what you see in front of you now are almost 300 paintings of responses from that people sent in. So I've been painting since 2019. And the paintings you can see, they're all the same size, because I don't want to say that one person's lost place is more important than somebody else's. But of course, some of them are, you know, super traumatic stories, and some of them are just really funny stories. So, you know, there's a way in which that can be disconcerting to some people. And also they're based on the sort of paintings that people used to do. They're based on sort of old postcards in a way. So they're like those hand colored old black and white postcards, which is why it's sort of slightly monochromatic. And of course, and all of the, pa all of the colors are just picked by me by random. I don't even look to see what the original colors were. Because I always think you would get those old postcards and you think, well, I wonder if that house really was red. You know, who knows, right? Maybe, maybe not. Um, and then I also put the names on them, which is characteristic of old postcards. But I also wanted people to have a sense of where everything is and the dates are when the place stopped existing. Um, and if you go to the website, which is a, a sort of integral part of this piece, um, disappointedtourist.org, if you find a place today that you think is missing, you can submit it. Um, and you can also look up all of the paintings and most of the people who sent them in submitted stories with them. So I normally wrote a sort of my attempt at being a kind of bad Wikipedia entry about what the place is. Um, to, I make no pretensions to you know, accuracy. I did my best, but you know, I'm sure I made mistakes. And then, then people's um, stories are underneath. And some people chose to be anonymous and other people identified just by their first name and last initial. And I have to say that this project, for me, has been an incredibly gratifying one because what it does do is create conversations. Um, every place I've shown it, people come and they're like, oh, I went there, or I heard of that place, or what is that? You know, those are, those are you know, and then you people, some people look it up, some people just stand there and shamelessly make up stories. Um, <laughs> and other people talk about what they would submit if they were going to submit something. Um, because we all have that. And so one of the things that to me has been amazing about doing the project is that it's continually surprising. I'm continually touched that people want to take part and I'm continually surprised by what they send in. Um, and some things are obvious, right? Some categories that you get, like you obviously get a lot of happy childhood memories. 
You know, you get the amusement parks, you get the swimming pools, you get all the places that have like the word enchanted in their like enchanted um, forest or, you know, various places like that. But then you also get places that um, are just maybe famous. Um, and sometimes it's some place that somebody went. Um, they're famous to them personally. So, you know, obviously CBGB's is just famous, but the person who sent it in had played there and wrote a beautiful sort of little essay about what it was like to play there and what it had meant to them. Um, and then some places um, are just, you know, well known. Like the Cotton Club is obviously incredibly well known as, as a place. But then there, are, then there are other places that are perhaps less obvious. They all have fascinating stories. Um, some of them are his, sort of historically important. Some of them are um, architecturally important. Some of them are culturally important. Um, there are stories here about colonialism that people have sent in, about places that were destroyed as a result of colonialism, like the Great Walls of Benin. You have places that everyone knew was destroyed, like the World Trade Center. You have places where, where people are trying to make a political point. You have um, somebody sent in the United Kingdom still as part of the European Union. Um, <laughs> You have places that are destroyed by terrorism. You have places that are destroyed by war. You have places that are destroyed by climate change. Um, you have places that are important on a very personal level, like somebody sent in their local supermarket. And then there are places that are important partly because of the sort of, you know, they're important for a particular group of people, for a particular history. You know, you have, um, you know, somebody sent in New Ahota, which was um, the, for a short time the capital of the Cherokee Nation you know, before it was destroyed. People send in um, all kinds of different um, places that are significant perhaps to a history that they feel they just want, you know, they, maybe they don't even miss the place so much, but they kind of wish that they lived in a world where this terrible thing had not happened. Um, that's, that's also part of it. And sometimes they're just, you know, just an attempt to like, there are a lot of like you know, very well-known LGBTQ sites as well that people sent in where they're, you know, maybe they were very important for the community for a brief period of time and then they went away. Or like Utopia House where the March on Washington was partly organized. You know, it was a place that somebody sent in and they were like, yeah, this is a place that's not, you can't go see it anymore, but somebody should know about it. And maybe it's about wanting to visit it, or maybe it's just about wanting it to kind of uplift it and have it be part of the conversation. So this is a place that, where sort of everyone's story can come. Um, you know, people keep on sending in things. You know, I'm getting more and more trees, I've noticed of late. A lot of people are missing trees, which perhaps makes sense. There are quite a lot of places also that are destroyed by climate change that are coming, increasingly coming in. Um, and what's wonderful about it for me is that every time it goes somewhere, it's like a rolling stone that totally gathers moss. So every time it goes somewhere, more people send in stories. The project becomes more interesting because of other people's contributions. And for me, personally, of course, it's tremendous fun. It's like being set a history lesson by a completely insane history teacher who is just like, and now will we be learning about when plastic was invented, Ellen? So. Um, but for me personally, it's been a great pleasure. And this project would not exist without all the people who took part. And, and that's really who I want to thank. And uh, as um, Mary mentioned, there are several new um, ones about Glasgow and Vineland and New Jersey. So if you look for those, um, they all have fascinating stories. And I could walk around talking about all of these places in excruciating detail. <laughs> But I won't because it's an opening. It's a party. So have a great time. And um, feel free to ask me any questions that you like. Um, you just come up to me. So.